Palace without their new signing. The his car at 11 o'clock last night and crossed the road to talk to two women. The Attorney General, Sir Patrick Mayhew, accepted Sir Allen's immediate resignation. Sir Patrick said this morning that in resigning immediately, Sir Allen had behaved every day. New UV from Valentine suspiciously fragile when in front. Beautiful footwork there by Kerry Dixon to set up Graham Lasso for the first. Poor defending by Arsenal standards let them in for a second. This time Lasso was the provider. Kevin Wilson the scorer and Chelsea were well and truly in command. The game turned when Vinnie Jones was adjudged to have handled the ball, although he and all the Chelsea defenders close by strenuously deny any contact was made. Lee Dixon, who took the throw, also took the penalty. They equalised following Anders Limpar's corner. Ian Wright's touch was just enough to deflect it past Hitchcock for his fifth goal in three games since moving from Crystal Palace. Arsenal's winner and our first goal of the day contender by Kevin Campbell powerful stuff to cap a great fight back by the reigning champions with their 26th goal in the league this season now that's good going making his first appearance before the arsenal crowd at highbury but chelsea obviously enjoy their visits to north london they've already won at spurs this season they get off to a storming start at highbury a brilliant kerry dixon run taking him past three arsenal defenders and graham lasso putting chelsea in front after 13 minutes Six minutes later, and Ian Porterfield's side increased their lead. The Arsenal defence, clearly missing the injured Tony Adams, are all over the place. The so the provider this time. His cross and Kevin Wilson eventually forcing it in. On the half hour, the Gunners are back in it, only thanks to a dubious penalty decision. Vinnie Jones is a judge to have handled. It's a penalty. Lee Dixon. His second successful spot kick of the season, reducing the deficit. Just after the interval, Arsenal get back on level terms. Alan Smith heading on the corner. Ian Wright poking it home. A goal on his home debut for the former Palace striker and his fifth in just three games. And midway through the second half, the champions go in front for the first time. It's a marvellous goal that does it. Kevin Campbell on the edge of the box. Arsenal back with a vengeance to take all three points. Consolidated that encouraging form. Two first half goals clinched it from their Soviet international, Sergei Yura. A header, then some sharp thinking to make the best of a defensive error by Maritimo. Benfica now second behind the surprise leaders, Boa Vista. Yeah, um, I've been to a couple of the big North London games and it's, the, the atmosphere is brilliant. It's great and great rivalry. We're both still in the competition. We can have a look now at uh, how Arsenal got through, courtesy of a 2 0 win last night over Leicester. And again, you were on the score sheet. Yeah. Well, there's uh, the good ball here from Ke I think he, Alan passes it to Kevin now. He just lays it out to Lee. He knocks a great ball in and just had to get in front of my defender, really. And got a stab on it. <laughs> it's a great move. I mean, already. There seems to be a great understanding between you and the rest of the team. Well, you know, I'm just trying to fit in still. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's all quite good. It's still part of the learning process I'm doing down here. But, Here know, comes the second. Yeah, it's a great move by Morris. He's a great slot. He just beats, he beats people for fun, really. He just slotted that really well. If you look here, he just goes past this guy. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. He just slots it past him. Great goal. Well, Paul Merson's one of uh, seven strikers George Graham's got now, with Jimmy Carter arriving yesterday. Um, presumably that means competition for places. Does that not make you feel uneasy from week to week? Uh, well, no, not really. Um, I've got to get in and try and do my job when I get my chance to. And uh, that's all I think about, really. You know, if, if, if I'm not doing well enough, I'm sure he'll let me know. And um, he'll drop, some, drop me out and put someone else in, which is only the, the, way, the way it would be. But, uh, you know, I'm just glad to be in there just doing a job at the minute. But at Palace, you were guaranteed a place. Well, I wouldn't say that um, guaranteed, but um, you know, uh, it was it was okay the way it was going. You know, me and Mark, we, we played m most games. You know, if if we weren't injured, um, and you know, it went quite well for us. But I just thought I needed a change, and it was the right time just for that big club atmosphere and a bit more competition, and it might get more out of me. 
Well, here you are at 28, uh, a lot more to come, but you're already London's most expensive footballer, and yet you weren't even playing league football until you were 22. Do you think the fact that you came in as a mature student, if you like, has made it easier for you? Um, maybe. Um, I'm still hungry for success in the game. I still want to achieve things. I still want to do a lot of things in the game. Um, you don't stop learning. And now I just, want to, I just want to learn as much as I can and do as well as I can, really. Well, I'm sure the uh, Arsenal Highbury fans would agree with that, Ian. Well, Arsenal and Spurs, are, as we've seen, safely through. But other first division clubs... Anyway, Palace, you know, I think Mark and, and Gabby, I think they'll do a good job for them. You know, they're always going to score goals. All right, then. Well, let's uh, take a look at a controversial moment we saw earlier on in that film. It was the, the match between Tramere and Chelsea, and it concerned uh, John Aldridge and his famous pen penalty shimmy. We can have a look at it now, and I know you've got strong views on this. Well... You can see he's, he's, def he's telling him there that he's, he's going to shimmy before he goes up. He, does he, like, is he allowed to do it and all that, he must be saying, but I don't know what the ref has said to him. The keeper is definitely ready for it. Yeah, isn't he? yeah. And uh, <laughs> although the picture of innocence. <laughs> but if you watch, look, as he goes, he, he does his shimmy and the keeper's moved anyway, so, you know, who's, who's at fault there really? Because the keeper's moved, he's shimmied, you know. I'm going to have to do something about it, I don't know. Well, uh, you're not taking sides, but Chelsea <laughs> are. Um, They're not happy. They're not, are they? Dennis no. Wise um, rewriting the laws with the referee. Well, the referee he gets a booking. Yeah, so he's not going to change his, his mind then, so it's pointless. I'm sure Dennis knows that now, though. Well, the referee is... It's all down to discretion, really. We can have a look at the law as, as written. Mm -hmm. uh, if, when a penalty kick is being taken, the player taking the kick is guilty of ungentlemanly conduct, the kick, if already taken, shall be retaken if a goal is scored. Now... In a, a game that uh, between Marseille and Auxerre last week, mm -hmm. the same sort of thing happened. It was Papa, a phenomenal scorer, who was uh, given the spot kick. There's the stop. There's the goal. Mm. Or is it? Well, it didn't look any. It didn't look as bad as uh, all those one, but uh, he had to retake that, didn't he? Uh, he did, uh, mm. but he got it all yeah. the same. It's down to the referee's discretion. I think so, yeah. The same old side, do they? Well, they've got a few injuries, um, Liverpool. Um, I think they're doing quite well with the players they've brought in. I think McManaman, I'm really impressed with him. Um, Tanner at the back. And the, the guy who didn't play today, Jones, I think his name was, played really well, what I've seen. So it's still the same Liverpool. They'll still be playing their football and getting results. Not to deny United their great start to the season. Do you still look upon Liverpool as the main threat? Well, I think um, both of them really are. Um, threats to, uh, to us, they're both on top of us. No, they're not both on top of us, I should say. Man United on top of us and Liverpool for what they've done in the past. But uh, Man United's had a magnificent start um, and obviously at the minute they're the ones to catch. But Arsenal, you think, will be up there amongst them? Yeah, Manchester but... United against Portsmouth. Coventry City against Arsenal. Grimsby Town meets Spurs. It's Middlesbrough against Barnsley and Oldham Athletic take on Derby County. Huddersfield Town will meet Swindon Town. Nottingham Forest take on Bristol Rovers. Sheffield United are up against West Ham United. Birmingham City versus Crystal Palace. And it's Liverpool against Port Vale. Leeds United will take on Tranmere Rovers. Manchester City against QPR. And Everton against Wolves. Well, those matches in in two weeks' time, and it's only one leg, one, one tie. You're away at Coventry. Not an easy prospect. No, they're going quite well at the minute, um, but we'll be fancying our chances going up there. Should be a good game. And uh, any other ties there that you can see as particularly exciting? I well, think Tranmere um, will be following them, yeah. especially if they get any penalties. Yeah, definitely. But um, I do like the, the look of the Grimsby Tottenham one. I think uh, Grimsby's got to fancy their chances a little, uh, going, being at home and everything, you know, and it being on the one leg. Certainly the shock of the night, Grimsby. And you mm. think they can do it again? Well, you never know. It's the cup, you know. Anything happens in the cup. And Manchester United take on Portsmouth. I mean, United, they're doing well in the league. Presumably you fancy them for the cup as well. Well, I um, fancy them to go um, quite far in it. I uh, fancy ourselves as well. But uh, Portsmouth, it'd be a good trip for them. I think they might do well up there. Well, let's look ahead to the England game. Hopefully you'll be playing. Um, how do you see that one going? Presumably we'll be getting a hat full of goals. Hopefully, yeah. Um, we, we, we need to win the game. So it, it doesn't matter who's playing, really. I think that the win is the most necessary thing at the minute, and that's what we want to do. It doesn't matter who's playing up front. News tonight that uh, Gary Pallister injured himself, uh, recurrence of a groin injury in that game against Cambridge, and he's uh, described as very doubtful for the game. Is this not further evidence that really sides like yourself, United, Arsenal, Spurs, are really playing too many games? 
Um, I think the manager's uh, got more to say on it than me personally. Um, it does take its toll, I think, um, as it's shown, um, the amount of games we do play, but um, you know, it's just one of them things that happen. Do you see the Super League improving things? Well, I'm not too clear on the Super League itself. Uh, I think it's, a, it's another couple of seasons away. Um, I don't think it would make much difference at the moment, but um, less teams, I think, would obviously uh, cut down more games and then maybe ultimately less injuries. Now, you're at one of the top clubs in the country. You have uh, made yourself the most expensive player in London. Realistically, what are your ambitions now? What, what ambitions do you have left in the game? I want to um, do as well as I can for Arsenal, first and foremost. Um, and I think when you're at a club such as Arsenal and you do well, I think the, um, the other honours, maybe England International, things like that, come as well. So, f firstly, doing well at Arsenal, and secondly, um, I'd like to do well for England as well, ultimately. Um, Guy, we've mentioned Palace already, but you must be feeling for them because they've, they've lost John Solarco. A, a mm. word about him because you've had some injuries in, in the yeah. past. What, what would you be? What would you say to him to encourage him? Well, mine wasn't um, half as bad as John's. I just hope and pray that he can get back and um, be as, uh, as good as he was for Palace before. Um, it's a bit of a bad one, but I'm sure, like the attitude he's got, and um, he'll be strong through it and he'll come through it quite well. Well, Salako's out, and it's rumoured that Mark Bright wants away. You've gone. I mean, if you were a Palace supporter, presumably you'd be rather worried at the moment. Well, we've got some good players at Palace. There are some good players still at Palace. Uh, um, I, as, as you know, like, I've moved on now, and um, it's just a different chapter for me now. And obviously, Mark's there, and he's doing quite well. He's scoring goals, and we've just bought. They've just bought um, Marco uh, Gabardini, and you know, it's a, it's a new time for him. So I think, like, Palace fans just uh, persevere with what we've got, what they've got. And uh, everything should be all right. There's no problems there, as far as I can see. Now, finally, I want a, a word about young Sean Wright. <laughs> uh, he's nine years old now. He's playing for a side that I think they're all three years older than him. I saw him score a goal the other day that was superb. Um, we're going to see him in an England shirt before too long? Well, that's down to him. Uh, <laughs> I think if he wants to play when he gets older, that's up to him. I won't force it on him. Just let him enjoy his game for now. Indeed. Well, I'll tell you, his headmaster reckons it will be a bit of And it goes. And Nicholas does it again. In 1983, the body prince Charlie of Scottish football scored more than 50 goals in a single season for club and country. At the tender age of 21, Celtic had unleashed a ready-made folk hero on the football folk of Glasgow. His stylish signature was written all over every goal he scored. Now, after a great adventure which took him away to Arsenal and Aberdeen, the Prince of Parkhead is back in residence. And guess who Scotland's leading goal scorer is again? Charlie Nicholas. 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 It's taken Charlie Nicholas a year to find his feet and refind his fitness and form for Celtic. With eight goals in an unbeaten run of seven games, the big homecoming is happening at last. It's great. I love the people here. I'm one of them. Uh, I love the patter. Uh, I find it very lit. Uh, Kenny the Gleish and Gary Gillespie and that say Liverpool is. Uh, I find myself among people who I register with. Uh, there's great humour in Glasgow. There's obviously a few problems in Glasgow, but uh, when you you feel one of them, uh, you don't mind the problems along with the good things. When Nicholas left Glasgow for London eight years ago, he had the world at his feet and his pick of the very best clubs in Europe. Well, I, I think first and foremost, I think I should have really went to Liverpool for football reasons, uh, for my style of play. I should have went there. But uh, I could have went there and maybe not been a success at Liverpool. I mean, a lot of people have done that. So uh, it's a thing you could never ever say. I could never bear witness and say, yeah, I definitely made the wrong thing there. In Liverpool, I probably should have went there and learned more of my trade because I was only 21. But I also had the chance to go to Italy at that time to, to Inter Milan. And uh, really, when I look at it, the, the Italian stuff now, you know, it, it really makes you wonder whether I should have went there or not. Was it the classic tale of the bright lights of London leading a young Glaswegian astray? No, people were... Uh, People have always been incensed by this playboy type thing when I was younger. I was, I, was sing I was a single boy, so I mean, why shouldn't I go out and have a beer uh, and try and relax on a Saturday night? Uh, I didn't go over the top, but the, the press made me, I tried to make me a type of new Georgie Best, and they soon found out uh, my talent wasn't uh, up to that standard where they were trying to get it. Charlie is quick to give credit to the management of Liam Brady for the fresh start that's brought him 13 goals in total this season and made Celtic Scotland's sole standard bearers in Europe next week. In a frustrating month for Scots abroad, he's well aware of the importance of beating the Swiss side Neuchatel. Well, I think it's very important for, for our country. Uh, the English clubs have done well getting through, but uh, we've struggled again. Uh, there's been a lot said about Celtic because we're the only ones left. But
but, but all we've done is get through one round, you know, but we've got potential to get through to the next round, we've got a chance of getting through to the next round. If we can get into the last 16, then I think that's another bonus for, for not just Celtic, but for Scotland. Celtic has got such a, a great following, such a loyal support that uh, we'll, we will always get a core of supporters even when we're going bad. But uh, when we're going well, we'll even sur surpass Rangers, these crowds. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pack this place every week. It's Celtic Park with 50,000 guaranteed. And uh, that's what we need. We've got the confidence, and we get it from the supporters. And there's very few people can stop us.